Good morning, I'm Carol Harmer from Charma Trading and today I'm going to walk you through the S&P because I think, you know, this market at the moment is at critical, crucial levels. So I want to show you why I'm thinking the way I'm thinking and the only way to do that obviously is to tell you and show you. Um, Obviously, the euro is at quite critical levels, but I mean, unless it breaks below 1080, it's not changing, it's still ranging. However, the S&P is quite different. Now, you will see that on the monthly, again, I've got this broadening top. Now, if you go back to 2009, you can see that the market is actually quite well behaved. If you look at what it did on a correctionary basis, I pull out here, you can see that, you know, apart from this, which we had in December 2018, we've actually stayed within a bullish phase, which is quite good. Now, the problem comes for me is that all this whippy sort of movement around at the end of as you're as you're reaching all-time highs this is in, in indicative of an end of trend okay now you've got other features that are explaining this you've got the rsi that is way off its high as you can see here you've got the monthly stochastics which were bullish virtually all the way through 2016 to december 2017 they are diverging at all-time highs this you can't ignore you know when markets do this everybody gets freaked and if you've been in a buy dip scenario for as long as what we have, it's very, very difficult to change your mindset, to sit, have a look and say, do you know what, maybe, just maybe, this market isn't gonna go to the moon. You know, there are criteria we follow for when markets do get to all-time highs, all-time lows. One of them is extreme volatile ranges. Well, looking at that chart, you can see nothing but extreme volatile ranges that we've had for nearly two years, well, 18 months. Now you look at other factors that come in, okay? The Russell hasn't gone anywhere near its all-time highs. The small caps are failing. You know, there are certain stocks in the S&P that are not making new highs. Now, when this happens, you know, you've got small caps down, medium caps down. When a lot of stocks in that make up the S&P are not rallying, Houston, we have a problem. And, I mean, that's a fundamental reason, and I'm not a fundamentalist. But what I am is extremely nosy, and... I want to see, I want to know why. So I do do, I do do, a lot of research into this. And when the fundamentals, technicals will always lead the fundamentals. You'll always get a change in price before the rest of the world catch up and go, ah, yes. Mm. Now, I've seen this time and time and time and time again. Markets react very quickly on news. But it's the technicals that really do show the way. Now, these are showing the way. Now, do we want to get into a state or a, or a thing like 2016? No, because in 2016, the correction was just a correction. And up we went. And all we did then is buy dips, buy dips, buy dips. And, you know, very, very profitable. This time it's different okay this time is very very 
different. So we've got market breaking up through this line I've been watching. So now we take a look at the weekly chart. Now what I'm seeing here is something quite bizarre. I'm seeing an inverse head and shoulder pattern within a bull run. Now, you can have these, absolutely no problem at all. You can see how it's taken all this time um, to, 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 be, to form this inverse head and shoulder pattern. Inverse head and shoulder patterns are quite rare, um, are quite common within continuation patterns. So don't let's get carried away that, oh my God, you know, we can't have this inverse head and shoulder pattern within a bull run. You can. And this is where the monthly and the weekly charts are completely at odds with each other. On the monthly, you're looking at a top in formation. On the weekly, you're looking at a continuation pattern with a target of, oh my God, you know, quite quite significant move higher. It's very, very easy to measure a target. It really is. All you're doing is you're taking that high there at 29.40, that low there at 23.46, gives you a total of 594 points. You add that to a break of this line, which is around 3.040, you get a measure target of 3634. So this is why everything's in a bit of a, con a conundrum at the moment. You've got the monthly charts going, I don't really think we're going much higher. You've got the weekly charts going, do you know what guys, we can get to 3634. There will be an awful lot of selling up at 3031 to 3040. Okay, because that was a measured target from way back when. So, this is where the struggle's going to be. This is where, obviously you've got to allow for stops, as we do, and our goes, bless them. You know, but this is where the, the struggle is going to be. And it's really a simple struggle. It is, the Bulls have had their way since 2009, more since 2016. The Bears had a little sniff in 2018. And the Bulls come back. The sellers have actually been able to trade this market. But what they want is supremacy. What the seller is looking for now. They're looking at the monthly charts. And they're going, this is going lower. You know, they're all looking. I mean, don't forget, I'm not the only one who um, can see this broadening top on the S&P. By far, I'm not the only one. Even if I take all the technical traders I've trained personally over the years, they should all be looking at that monthly chart and that broadening top. These are rare patterns. It's very rare that you will see this sort of pattern. But I've seen it before. So I know that I know that they work, but I'm also concerned about the weekly. Um, and I think it's going to be quite a tug of war and probably it's going to do something over August when we're all laying on the beach and we're all on our holiday. So what I suggest is that we keep one little eyeball open on this market, okay? Because it's, we really are at crucial levels. And I, you know, it's very rare that I will jump up and down um, and start to screech. But unfortunately, this is what I need to do now. I need for you to see what the longer term picture is, okay? The, your, the noise that you're gonna have over the next few months in the S&P is unprecedented. As long as you know that, 
and you understand what direction we're going to be going in, you should be able to trade through it, okay? The idea will be stick to the important levels, stick to them. If you don't, it's at your peril. You know, a lot of retail traders come in, they look at their little five minute chart, the guy's going up, thanks Bob, and, and they don't see anything else. They could have bought a really major chart point. They could have bought a Fibonacci level, 200 day moving average. And they wonder why it plummets out outside. Look at the long term charts. You've got to know your trends. Primary, secondary, minor. You've got to know all these things. Well, you've got to know a lot more, but for today, you just need to know that. Now, let's take a look at the daily chart and see if I can get inspiration from that one. No. <laughs> In a word, there's not a lot that can give me inspiration. New all-time highs, not new all-time highs in this. RSI ticking up at neutral levels. Overnight, unchanged from the close. Now, this is telling you, okay? We know our sell area, 3031 to 3040. We know this. If we see the market anywhere near there, I personally will be selling it, okay? Now it's, it's a very chancy, if you like, to sell into an upward market. But I've always been a bit of a contrarian trader. And being a technical trader, I can see the value in selling and not worrying about it unless it breaks through 30, 48, 30, 50. Now, obviously you can see all the moving averages, we're above everything, but we're not still making the gains on the indicators. You know, and that's what we've got to do. We, we need confirmation. Obviously your price is primary, it is primary. Your price is primary, always look at the price, chart patterns, the technical indicators, they're secondary, but what you do when you, when you go on, or what I do, when I go on reversal watch, and I'm on reversal watch now, when you see it advertised in the newspapers, the news is full of this market is going to the moon and it starts to accelerate away and everybody piles in, that's your clue. That's the time when you want to go, it's not going up that much further. It is a classic end of trend move. I've seen them, I've seen them all in the currencies back in 1985 when we had central bank intervention every day. You know, we had, we had to work through that. It was, it was a, if anybody's worked in central bank intervention and with the Bundesbank and the Bank of Japan, you know, you know how hairy it was back in those days. So markets with big ranges doesn't phase me because We've had them back in currencies, back in the early to mid mid eighties. So I've stayed with the way I trade and the way I analyze markets for all these years and it works, okay? So just be aware of these major levels and when everybody wants to go the same way, that's the time it's not gonna go the same way, all right? You've got the resistance levels, 
You should all know the downside support. If you don't, it's 2943 2904 2875. That's just off the top of my head. Okay. Well, thank you for listening. It's been a pleasure. This will be my last uh, markets.com video for August. I'm off next week for five weeks. Shoo. And um, we'll come back refreshed and all together in September. Um, don't get me wrong, when I say I'm not working, wherever I am, I will have my pad with me so that if that market starts to go, I'm not losing it. I can't. I can't. I've spent all this time analysing the thing just to be laying on the beach when it finally pukes. No. Okay. But you all take care. And I'll see you when we resume in September. Good luck. Oh.